audition. It's one audition. It's not brain surgery. It's not cancer, you know what I mean? It's just an audition. Never give up. Every single person in this industry gets rejected. Every single person in this industry gets rejected. You get the job you're meant to get. You get the jobs that are meant for you. You will get rejected like 99% of the time in this industry. That's what makes it so hard, is like, you're always rejected. So you can't be like, oh, I'm fabulous. I'm gonna get the part. Like, uh-uh, no. Every single person in this industry gets rejected. Rejection. I'm Claudia Schmucke, I'm the Director and Chief Curator at the Bluff Art Museum. Uh, we're very excited to host an exhibition by Candy Sprites entitled The Woods. The title refers to Hollywood, Bollywood and Nollywood, uh, all three uh, major film industries that are generally categorized as mainstream film industries. But it also uh, alludes to the woods as a place of fantasy and folklore and it's an implication that is very much cherished by Candice because this particular body of work is very much concerned with childhood, uh, the performance of childhood, as well as the culture of child actors in those three mainstream film industries. This particular body of work, The Woods, was shot in Los Angeles, in Mumbai, and in Lagos, obviously the headquarters of the film industries that are under investigation. It's uh, structured as a trilogy um, entitled The Audition, The Rehearsal, and The Interview. And each of these parts is located in one particular city and in one particular industry. As you walk into the exhibition, you're first confronted with the audition, which is the part that was shot in Hollywood, where she uh, put out an open call for 25 young Hollywood hopefuls, as she likes to call them, to come and audition for this piece as they would for a regular movie. What she did is she had them go through the similar kinds of exercises that every child would as they as they go to a professional audition and present themselves, including holding a slate up with their name and age, saying something special about themselves that sort of, you know, sets them apart from the other actors, perform a monologue, sing a song, you know, it being Hollywood, a lot of them wrote their own songs, others performed Beyonce or Justin Timberlake, and, and do all the kinds of exercises that would be required. The monologue, however, and that is sort of what, you know, where, where her interest and her manipulation of the situation comes in, is constructed of lines provided in limitless amounts available online and in printed materials uh, by Hollywood gurus who are specifically talking to that kind of audience to an audience that is composed of children who want to become actors or parents who want their children to become actors because part of the specificity of Hollywood is that a lot of the child performers are really sort of pushed into the business because of their parents' ambitions and maybe less so because of their own. Whichever it may be though, they all consume an incredible amount of self-help books that tell them how to break into show business. Uh, one of the main features of this particular body of work and sort of the most haunting moment maybe is a series of screenshots that she undertook with each child and they're all between 8 and 16 uh, where she asked them to just be themselves or become whoever they wanted to be in front of the camera for five minutes without giving them any script or any advice as to what they should do. And uh, you know while some kids of course take advantage of that opportunity and really perform in a way that they want to be seen as actors, others completely break down and don't know what to do with themselves. So you have children who are just standing there doing this, or who sing, or who dance, or who do all kinds of different things. And of course it's a, it's a direct homage also to Warhol screenshots, which you know occurred over much longer periods of time, but there's an obvious reference to them also in the fact that they're screened in black and white. And also speaking to sort of the professionalization of the industry and the fact that children really are very much treated like products, whether it is by these gurus or whether it is by their parents who, you know, choose to homeschool them so that they can prepare them for a career in acting, is really rendered aesthetically um, palpable in the fact that each of these 
children is filmed against sort of a white screen. So it's the, the aesthetic of the eye kid, you know, sort of adopting the iPad to the barge screen and as a background for these kinds of editions.